Hi guys, welcome back to another video on viewports. Uh, in this video, we're going to be setting up some security cameras, displaying them on the TV screen and, you know, switching between them. We're going to have multiple cameras in the array. They're going to be animated. Uh, you'll be able to turn the TV on, switch between the cameras, this kind of thing you see in like a lot of shooters, a lot of stealth games, uh, and we're going to be recreating that here. Uh, this follows on from two of my previous videos where we've done the TV, we've set up the mesh in the viewport, and then we've set up the control structure around that in the second video. You don't have to have watched both of those, but it will help you if you haven't got a TV and you don't know how to control it. I'm going to be using part of the script from the second video in this. Um, so if you don't have that, I'll put a link below. Um, so you can copy and paste that in or you can go watch the previous video. It's really up to you. If you're enjoying this series, if you like what I'm doing, hit the like button. It really helps us out. Other than that, let's get into it. So the first thing we need to do is save this scene as a separate scene to work on. Call it something like security underscore CRT underscore TV. Um, then we'll delete this video player that's inside the control node under the viewport. We won't be needing that anymore. Then we'll add a spatial node under the viewport and call it cameras. And under this node, we'll add a few cameras. Okay. I'm gonna go for just two at the moment for the purposes of the tutorial, but it can be as many as you like. Um, and I'll just put these in separate locations so we can tell them apart because we are trying to switch between them. Okay, there's that. Okay, so we're gonna change the root node name as well so I don't get confused, security underscore CRT underscore TV. And then in this script, uh, we're gonna save as, do the same exact thing. Um, so it's pretty similar what we're doing here as what we did in the previous video. We're just going to remove a couple of references and get rid of the get channels function, all the stuff with the TV. Um, it's not needed and just put pass under the ready function. Alrighty. So now we should just be able to turn the TV off and on, but it won't do anything else. I'm going to put mine into this security camera example scene. Uh, and I'm just going to, it's just a regular office with my Bean first person controller. We'll drop this in and uh, I'll just like make it float in the air so we can see it well. Change it to editable children and position these cameras around the scene. Now they're inside the viewport, so they won't move with the model. They'll just still be at zero, zero, most likely. So you're gonna have to go find them whenever you drop them into a scene like that. Uh, TV was on for some reason, so I just changed that to be off. And you notice that it's just a black scene. This happens quite frequently when you're dropping in things that have viewports on them, the material just lose its reference. So you just reset it. Um, it'll look right in the editor, but it just won't work. Um, so once we've done that, yep, you can see that the camera is showing on the screen. You can see the bean just sitting there. And obviously I've made a mistake with the code because that's not turning off properly. It looks like I've deleted the animation for on or off when we're turning it off. So I'll just add that back in. So I guess you have to be a bit careful when you're manipulating a script like this. So we're also gonna change the names of some of these variables so that they make a bit more sense. I'll change channels to camera nodes and I'll change current channel to current camera. Okay, now we'll need to get access to the node that we put the cameras in. Uh, so that's just under the viewport and in the ready function, we will add those, the children of that node to the camera nodes array with the function get children. And finally, when we press the change channel button, we'll set the current camera the same way we change channels. As a refresher, the variable current camera counts up by one when we press the change channel button. When it hits the size of our array, we'll set it back to zero. We'll use this to access each element of our array. Uh, using this function, 
make current, which is an inbuilt function that sets whatever camera you're calling it on the current camera for the viewport. So you can imagine what will happen as we call this on the different cameras in our array. So if you were only looking to set up some cameras connected to a TV or something like that, that's all you have to do. We're going to take it one step further though. Let's add a security camera and animate it. I've got a security camera included in this pack. It's available on itch.io and comes fully rigged, so you can pose it in Blender if you want to change the angle. Skeletons don't work so great in Godot, so we're going to do our own animation for this setup. I'll create a new scene and add the GLTF camera. Next, I will add an animation player. I'll create a new animation and call it Sweep. We'll make this 20 seconds and have it sweep at a 90 degree angle and back over 20 seconds with a two second delay in between. Um, probably about right, you know, you could probably make it slower. It really just depends on what you're going for. Uh, cameras don't really sweep that quickly, but you know, this is just a demonstration. And I'll just get that there is what we want. So we've got a two second delay in between the two and then back to zero. Okay, super simple. You want to be animating the model, not the main node. That way we can position this very easily without having to worry about which way it's going to swing. Okay, we'll add the camera as a child of the model and just line it up with the direction the camera is facing. It doesn't have to be exact, just pretty close. I think I went for a 30 degree angle. With the camera inside the model, it will actually be visible and not look particularly great. You can see here in the preview, We'll need to change the visual instance of the security camera model to prevent it from being drawn. Right click on the imported model, choose make editable, then on the mesh, set the visual instance to be layer two. And on the camera, untick that layer on the coal mask. And now we won't be drawing the security camera model over the camera that's inside of it. Next, we'll need to add a script to expose the camera as a variable. And that'll be all we'll need from it right now. We'll call the variable something like security camera and just add the path to that camera. And we'll save this scene and we'll probably call it something like security camera. Or I'm gonna save it inside the folder with the model. And then we'll go back to our security CRT screen, delete these two cameras, we won't be needing them, and add the models instead. Well, make sure you grab the right one. Now this is the scene with the animation player. Um, and just duplicate that. I'm going to put four in. It doesn't matter where you put them in this scene because when you go to your main scene, you're going to have to find them all over again. Uh, and we'll just need to change this a little bit so we're accessing the variable inside that script on the security camera. I'm going to create a local variable here to make it a little bit more clearer with what I'm doing. So it's the exact same code as below camera nodes, current camera, but dot security camera. And then Instead, on the next line, we'll just go security cam dot make current. And that's all we need to do. Make sure that this variable name is the same as your script. Alrighty. So let's jump over into our other scene and try to set this up. For some reason, mine's orthographic. I'll change that back to perspective and just check out this camera. I'm going to speed through this next bit. I'm just going to position these you know, around the level so that we get a good idea of what this is capable of. Okay, I'll just... Position that there. As you position these around the map, just make sure you keep in mind that they're going to swing to the right 90 degrees. Uh, so make sure that they're not going to run into anything, clip with any kind of mesh. It's not going to look very good if they do. Okay, so we've positioned these. One thing to remember is to make the animation looping and auto start so we don't have to worry about it. Okay, let's test this out. And look at that, we've got a sweeping camera. We can switch between them. Looks amazing. And the cameras are in scene and you can see them through the player. One thing to note is I'm not fully aware if it's like conventional to add the model straight to the viewport and just leave them there. It's a lot easier this way because you don't need to worry about the position of the camera. You can just animate that with the model and it'll all just work in sync. Um, it might be more 
correct to just have the camera inside the viewport node. I'm not too sure. I wasn't able to find much documentation on, on how to do that, but it does work and there doesn't seem to be any kind of performance hit. So we can just do it that way because it's easier. Um, and that's it. You've got a full working security camera system linked up to a TV that you can toggle between the cameras. It looks amazing uh, and I'm really happy with it. So uh, how'd you guys go? Let me know down in the comments. Um, I'm thinking in the next video, I'm going to make them destructible, which will be really fun. All right, guys, that's all from me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll leave a link to the other two videos or the playlist somewhere around me right now. Um, so click on them if you haven't seen them, check them out. Like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff to help out the algorithm. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.